version of the defending champion New Orleans Saints. Uh, this is a team without, you know, too many uh, major major weaknesses given uh, given the amount of talent they have uh, and the amount of depth that they've developed over the last couple of years. They've drafted extremely well, and with the explosive offense and the playmaking defense, the team that pre presents a, a large number of problems for a lot of teams. Looking at their offense first, uh, what, what, what you love about this offense is their balance. Given You know they have the explosive offense, you know they have the numerous weapons, uh, but this is a team that shows a lot of desire to run the football, and, and they do it very well. Uh, it's just typically not seen from a team with such an explosive passing offense. And, uh, and to start with their running game, I think it starts up front. Their offensive line, yeah, last year they lost Jamal Brown, and they went, they went forward with Jermon Bushrod at left tackle, but that didn't seem to hinder their offensive line overall as a run blocking unit. I think that's largely because of their, the interior of their offensive line. Uh, starting at left guard, Carl Nix, third year player. Uh, this guy's a big guy, but a very good athlete for his size, and he really has come on as one of the better guards in the league, I think, very underrated. Uh, at, at center, we talk about Jonathan Goodwin. What he does very well is, is run block. He also pass blocks fairly well, uh, but but is a big guy, big center, and he's done, he's done a tremendous job. He certainly did last year. And at right guard, Jari Evans, probably one of the top two to three guards, overall guards in the NFL. Uh, rewarded with a big contract this offseason, and uh, he's a guy that can do it all, but certainly, again, he excels in run blocking. Uh, big strong uh, beast and a right tackle John Stimcombe had a good year as a run blocker not the best as a pass blocker uh, but he's a solid guy a veteran at right tackle and and uh, and, and, and you know, very reliable in what and what they want him to do at left tackle Jermon Bushrod did not have a good year he did not and that's predictable uh, first year starting uh, fourth year guy um, small school guy but but he's a guy that uh, he wasn't enough of a liability to completely hinder this offense, completely hinder this running game, and uh, and he he's looking to take the next step forward. They drafted Charles Brown, a uh, uh, left tackle prospect at USC, um, maybe a steal where they got him late in the second round. But and he's a very good athlete, but he's a guy that's going to probably need to add a little more physicality to his playing style to be able to contribute uh, as a run blocker. But he will push Bushrod down the line. The running backs I think have gotten really deep. I think he's talking about Pierre Thomas. He really broke through last year. Averaged over five yards of carry. Uh, a, a very good style, you know, slashing style. Reminds me of Fred Jackson the way he just hits the hole really fast and uh, and 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 certainly and gets the yards after contact. And, and Reggie Bush, I think he he had a sneakily good year as a running back. I think they utilized him the best of his skills, uh, his skill set, and uh, he, he did a good job, uh, you know, picking up yardage uh, where where they asked him to, especially outside the tackles. But but sneakily good inside the tackles as well, but still not 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 uh, not a big presence. And after that, Lionel Hamilton has, has has broken out as a kind of you know short yardage type of weapon. Uh, you saw him in the playoffs a little bit, and he's there. Heath Evans can take carries as well from his fullback position. And over and, and some young guys uh, competing back there, P.J. Hill, Chris Ivory. So it's a fairly deep running back uh, you know backfields, and uh, and they have plenty of options and different things they can do out of that. Uh, from that group, so I think the running back, the running game should remain strong. The passing game, we know what they're going to do. Uh, Lance Moore comes back at receiver from you know an injury hampered year, but we saw a breakout of Robert Meacham, a former high round pick, and you know he he has all the skills to be an ideal you know and, and a tremendous compliment to to Marcus Colson, who is you know Pro Bowl caliber receiver. Got it. Needs to stay a little more healthy, but. Uh, tremendous as, as far as getting separation, especially for his size, but a big presence, great in the red zone, uh, you know, great just picking up first downs. But I love Lance Moore as a as a potential slot guy, short yardage guy, uh, sure-handed, uh, quick, very good routes, precise, and I think uh, Drew Brees likes him too. But again, you saw Devin Henderson make a lot of plays. Um, guys like Adrian Arrington have shown promise. So this is a deep receiving core, and then you got a tight end group uh, with Shockey getting up there in years. Certainly banged up, but still did a pretty darn good job this year, this past year. Uh, David Thomas was solid, especially in action when Jeremy Shockey was out at injury. And, you know, they just drafted Jimmy Graham, who I think has all the upside uh, and, 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 and more upside than probably any young tight end in the game, uh, you know, uh, comparable to Jermaine Gresham, but even a better athlete, 6'6", six, six, former basketball player. Very smooth, uh, very big, and uh, tremendously athletic. Four-five speed. So uh, uh, it's going to be fun to see him develop and progress in this offense. Uh, so Drew Brees has a bevy of weapons, and uh, he has all the accuracy, the timing, the athleticism, 
and uh, and the, and the feel in the pocket to, to to get the ball to these guys and, and have them make plays. So I, I, I fully expect this offense uh, to com- to continue to be great and to continue to be extremely explosive and versatile and be able to play well even with even with injuries. Except for if Drew Brees was to go down, I think their backup quarterback situation is is tenuous. Uh, they just they just brought in Pat Ramsey, but I think that that group of guys. It's gonna be, it's gonna be sticky. It's gonna be a sticky situation if Breeze is out because as long as barring a Drew Breeze injury, this offense should be fine. Defensively, what you loved about this defense was their aggression, their speed, their playmaking ability. Uh, but what you didn't like was their inability to stop the run and their inability to really get a lot of pressure outside of uh, outside of blitzing, outside of bringing that 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 extra that extra man. Um, Charles Grant's gone now from their, that defensive end spot. They brought in Alex Brown. They brought in Jimmy Wilkerson, um, and, and uh, they returned Bobby McRae. So they have a group of guys that can get pressure. A group of guys that will be a presence. But I think the main thing uh, for this defensive line and overall is, is to be stout against the run. I think teams uh, found it pretty pretty easy to run against them. I think they had it they had it very good. I mean, I think uh, Adrian Peterson's fumbling problems in the NFC Championship came kind of uh, glossed over the fact that Adrian Peterson. You know, ran roughshod over this defense, uh, and and uh, that that certainly helped them out. So, you know, this defensive line needs to be more stout against the run, especially Will Smith uh, at defensive end, um, but also inside inside with Cedric Ellis, former first round pick, hasn't been very good against the run, hasn't been too productive against the pass either. He needs to return to his penetrating, uh, disruptive style of play. Uh, guys like Remy Ayodell at, at nose tackle, he's going to face some competition from Mario Presley, maybe from some young guys as well. Uh, so that that group of interior guys needs to improve their stoutness and improve you know, some of the playmaking, some of the guys that can make some plays there. Uh, but overall, def- defensive line has bodies, has depth, and we'll see. You continue to see Tony Hargrove move around from end to tackle. At the linebacker, uh, they lost Scott Fujita. Um, Scott Shanley's been a little banged up, but Jonathan Vilma is a, is a complete stud at middle linebacker. Not the biggest guy, not going to be the most stout against the run, uh, and so the, the the importance of that defensive line is even higher uh, with Bill Mutt, middle linebacker. But a tremendous playmaker, great in coverage, uh, speed. He's a, he's a tremendous leader and playmaker. I think he's, he's great. He's the leader of this defense. Um, outside linebacker, they brought in Clint Ingram. Uh, he's banged up as well. I'm not sure how much he can really add. I'm not too keen on this outside linebacker uh, group. I don't think Scott Shanley is the, the best guy, especially against the run. And you know, and, and we'll see some competition between young guys like Jonathan Casillas and Jolon Dunbar. But overall, this group does is is a little bit of a weakness, and and um, will need to step up uh, their play. The stars of this defense uh, lied in the secondary. Uh, at the corner, Jabari Greer has turned into one of the better cover corners in the game. I, I really like him. Very very underrated, uh, but but very tight coverage. Tracy Porter, obviously, his interception for touchdown in the Super Bowl, uh, highly 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 seen um, and publicized. Tracy Porter has all the skills to be a, t- a solid starting quarterback corner corner in the game. I think Randall Gay, his skill has kind of um, gone down. Um, maybe he can be okay in the, you know, covering slot guys in a nickel, uh, but I'd like to see Patrick Robinson take his job eventually, their first-round pick from this year. He has all the skills to be a starting caliber corner, so I think they've had a good, good, done a good job adding uh, talent to that group, and I think they have some speed and skill to play the, the man coverage skill, schemes they want to cover, uh, play, but definitely a little bit of youth, um, definitely a little bit of inconsistency overall in that group. And at safety, Darren Sharper certainly saw his nine interceptions this year, uh, but he's battling uh, knee injuries. Um, and, and But they moved Malcolm Jenkins from corner to safety. He had a solid year at corner, but I think he can be a real stud at safety, at free safety, as an instinctive guy, physical guy, but a guy that can make plays on the football as well. And so it's going to be interesting to see if there's a little bit of a battle there for that free safety job, but certainly Jenkins is a guy for the future. And at strong safety, Roman Harper, not the greatest guy in man coverage or in coverage in general, but a guy that's great in the box, and he's going to be very important for what they want to do as far as stopping the run. But watch out for a second-year player, Chip Vaughn, guy that didn't get to play last year due to injury. I think he has similar a similar skill set to Roman Harper and can contribute down the line to we'll see if he can stick on this roster. But overall, this this, this team uh, returns a lot of the same pieces, and I think they can do a lot of the same things. This defense needs to improve their consistency and improve their stoutness versus the run. Uh, but overall, uh, I, I, barring major injuries, I think this team is going back to the playoffs and has a strong chance to defend their title.